Hi Math65. This is the video for lesson 116, which is located on page 598 in your textbook and is scheduled for Monday, April 20th. Okay, this lesson we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions, but first we're going to have to find our common denominator. Remember, in the past, for the most part, our fractions have had the same denominator. But if I go to my first example and look at it, <clears throat> my denominators are 2 and 4. I can't add fractions that have a different denominator. So the first thing I have to do before I can add them is I have to put them into a common denominator or the same denominator. So I like to write my problems vertically because I think it's easier to see that way. So I'm going to change my fractions to have a common denominator. The way that I do that, <coughs> excuse me, is I take the multiples of the two numbers. Remember multiple, we think multiply by the counting numbers. So my multiples of two, two times one are two, two times two is four, two times three is six, and I'll stop there because I've already got four in here. So then my multiples of four, four times one are four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12. <clears throat> so I wanna grab my least common multiple or my smallest multiple that they both have. That may, that's what common means is they both have it. And in this case, it's four. And that is gonna become my new denominator for both of the fractions. So I'm gonna rewrite my fractions or rename my fractions with a denominator of four, okay? We see this one already has a denominator of four, so that's easy. We can just copy that one right over. We know we're adding. Now I have a two as my denominator here and a four as my denominator here, so I have to do something to get from two to four, so I have to multiply it by some number, and two times two will give me four, Whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So I have to multiply my numerator times two. So one times two is two, okay? So now I have common denominators on my fraction so I can add. When I have my common denominators, I know that my denominator is four on both of them and my denominator is not going to change. So I'm gonna just copy that right down. Now I can go and add my numerators. Two plus one is three. So the answer to one half plus one fourth is three fourths. Okay, so we've done all this before. The new step is simply finding that common denominator using their least common multiples. Let's look at another. So I have <clears throat> excuse me, the mixed number three and one-half minus the mixed number one and one-sixth. So I look at my denominators, even on a mixed number, I'm looking at the fraction denominators. I have a two and I have a six. They are not the same, so I cannot subtract. So I have to come over and write out my multiples again. If you don't have to do this step, that's fine. But if you do, that's fine also, okay? This is just the way the process works. So I'm gonna multiple, I think multiply by my counting numbers. My counting numbers, two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight. And I'm gonna stop there since I already got a six. Six times one is six, six times two is 12, and six times three is 18. Okay, so I look through and find that they both, the smallest one they have in common is six. So I know that my new denominator will be six. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rewrite the whole number part of my mixed number and with my new denominator. I'm gonna hold on to that. Rewrite the whole number there with my new denominator. Okay, now this one it was already at six, so we don't have to change anything, so we can just copy that one straight over, okay? So 
going back up here, my three is not gonna change, so I just copied that right back over. But now I have to look at this one half fraction and make it something over six. <clears throat> so I have to take my two times some number to get to six, and I know that's times three, and what I do to my denominator, I must do to my numerator. So one times three is three. So now I look at my new problem, which is equal to my original problem, and I see my denominators are both six, so now I, it's something I can work with. And since they're both six and I'm subtracting, I just simply copy that down, okay? So now I can subtract my numerators. Three minus one is two, and then I can subtract my whole numbers. Three minus one is two. So my answer I have written is two and two sixths, but we know there are two fraction rules. One of them is as a review, when you have an improper fraction as your answer, you always write it as a mixed number. That one doesn't apply here. We're a mixed number. So that one doesn't apply. That was just review. Fraction rule number two, always reduce your fractions. So two is not going to change because it's a whole number here. It's not a fraction, but two sixths can be reduced. In order to reduce two sixths, if you remember, we try, we're trying to get them to the lowest number in the fraction the lowest numbers in the fraction, okay? So in order to do that, <clears throat> we have to find the factor that they both have in common, which is, now this was their multiples. Remember, factor is divide. So let me list off the factors of two, or one times two equals two, and that's the only factors of two. For six, it's one times six and two, times three, okay? So the factor they have in common is two. So that's what I use to divide by. I divide my numerator and my denominator because what I do to one, I must do to the other, to by two. <clears throat> and when I do that, that equals one third. So my answer is actually two and one third because I reduce that part of my, I reduce the fraction piece of my mixed number to get to one third. Okay? So even though, so this step, we had to find the common denominator for our fraction, but then once we got our answer, we weren't done yet. We still had to reduce our answer, the fraction piece of our mixed number. So there were multiple steps to that problem. Okay, our next problem is to compare. <clears throat> In order to compare fractions, I have to have, they have to be a common denominator, okay? Now, we've done some comparisons of fractions where I've gotten out my fraction pieces and we've looked at that and that's been good. But this is teaching us a new way to compare fractions. And the, the without having our fraction pieces to put together, okay? So in order to do this, what we do is we have to get them into the same types of pieces, so to speak, if we were using our pieces. <clears throat> so we have to get them to a same common denominator in either fourths or eighths or a common denominator of these two. So again, I take my two numbers, four and eight, and I list out my multiples. Remember, multiple equals multiply, so four times one is four, four times two is eight, and I'm gonna stop there because I've already got an eight available, and I know that eight times one is eight. So I'm gonna grab that, okay? It will, your, and that's my least common multiple, which is gonna become my denominator. It will not always be one number or the other. Now you look in our problems so far, it, up here in this problem, it was four, which just happened to be one of these. In this problem, two or six, 
it was six, which just happened to be one of these, but it will not always be that way. So far, this lesson is starting you off um, kind of a little simpler, where typically it has been one of these, but it will not always be. So don't get comfortable with that. Go through and check and make sure what the least common multiple is. Okay? So that was that. So I'm going to rewrite my fractions in eighths. Three fourths equal to something over eight. And then 7 eighths is already in eighths, so I'm just going to leave that as 7 eighths and just copy it straight down. Okay, so 4, <clears throat> in order to get to 8, I have to multiply it by 2. And what I do to my denominator, I must do to my numerator. So 3 times 2 is 6. So now, I'm essentially comparing 6 eighths here, 6 eighths, compared to 7 eighths is what I'm comparing now. Now I have something I can compare. So if I have six eighth pieces, or if I have seven eighth pieces, okay? So this is something I compare. So six eighths we know is smaller than seven eighths. And remember our options are greater than, less than, or equal to. So six eighths would be less than seven eighths because six is less than seven. So we put it back in our original problem and write in our less than sign. So 3 fourths is equal to 6 eighths, 7 eighths stayed 7 eighths, and then we had something we could compare. Okay? All right, I have one more, which is... one third plus one half. <clears throat> Remember I just told you that it's not always going to, your common denominator for the two fractions is not always going to be one of these, and this is a case of it, okay? So if I write out my multiples, two and three, remember multiple, multiply by the counting numbers. Two times one is two, two times two is four, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 10, and 2 times 6 is 12. Let's go for 3. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12. Okay? So they have a few common multiples together. 12 is a common multiple. They both have it. And 6 is a common multiple. They both have it. But I want my least common multiple. So in this case, my least common multiple is six. So I'm going to change, I'm gonna rewrite my fraction vertically, my problem vertically, because I like to add better that way. It's, for me, it's easier to see. All right, so I have to change them to a denominator of six. Okay, so six and six. Now, Neither of my original denominators were six, so I have to actually change both fractions in this problem. So I look at it and say, okay, from three to six, I multiply by two, and what I do to one denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So I'm gonna have to multiply by two up there, and one times two is two. Okay, so my new fraction one third is equal to two sixths. One half, <clears throat> you can either, you can look at it and go, I know that there's a fraction rule that any fraction equal to one half, the numerator is half of the denominator. And if you look at that, you already know what that is. I'm gonna go ahead and work it out for, just to be sure. So two times some number is six. We know that's times three. What you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. One times three is three. So you look at and go, okay, remember I said the rule, any fraction where the numerator is half of the denominator is equal to one half. So when you didn't have that three, you could have looked at it and said, well, I know three is half of six, so the numerator has to be three because that's how it equals one half. But either way works. It gets you there, both of them. So now I have my new, 
problems that I can work with. I have common denominators, so I can add. And because I have those common denominators, I'm just gonna copy that denominator down. And then I'm gonna look to my numerators. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm doing an addition problem, so I'm gonna add my numerators, which are two plus three is five. And that is the answer to that problem. Okay, your um, practice problems are on page 600. There are, um, let's see, A through N, and then it, it gives you a lot of instructions, but the basically, you're gonna be doing what we just did. Let me bring that on screen and talk you through it a little bit. <clears throat> um, okay, so you're gonna, it says to find the sum or difference, follow these steps. Figure out what the new denominator should be. We've done that in our examples. Change the name of one or both fractions. Well, that just means once you figure out that new denominator, find that equal fraction to change the name to the new denominator. Okay, add or subtract the fractions, which is what we did, and then reduce the answer when possible. So if you look at the example we did on number two, that means two and two sixths, and we reduced it to two and one third. Okay, so that was, we've done all those steps. It looks like a lot of steps, but you have done that for each of these with the example. Okay, so there you go. Practice problems, page 600. And I'll have a video for 117 coming soon. Bye.